Uh, and with that, uh, I would like to uh, go right into our next discussion. Our, um, it'll be a dual panel distinguished uh, speech and discussion that we have today. And it's a very interesting distinguished pair of local representatives and uh, community leaders within this Westchester County region uh, who will be discussing the municipal and local directives and initiatives relative to religious, ethnic, and racial relations, again, here in Westchester County. So with that, I would like to bring to the stage um, Westchester County legislator Benjamin Boykin II and uh, Joseph Costelli, who is the police chief of the uh, White Plains Department of Public Safety. Good morning, uh, everyone, and welcome to Westchester County, New York. The, um, and you're in basically almost the center of the county here. I'm joined uh, this morning by my assistant at the County Board of Legislators, Joseph Arara, and she'll be uh, moving the slides here as we go through this uh, presentation. Thank you for inviting me here today to speak about things that the county is doing to have a more welcoming community and county. And then you'll hear from my great police chief, the city of White Plains, uh, Chief Costelli, in a few moments. First of all, let me give you just a little bit about who I am. Uh, this, uh, I am county legislator, uh, District 5. We have 17 county legislators. As you can see, I've been in elected office for quite a while, county legislator since 2014. I'm former chairman of the Board of Legislators for four years. I've also served on the White Plains Common Council for 13 years, the White Plains School Board for seven years. And before that, I actually had a business career, retiring as assistant treasurer of Nabisco, spent many years working with RJR Nabisco, and also I became a CPA with the firm of Deloitte, which is now, which many of you, if you're old as I am, remember it as Haskins and Sales and I am a small business owner. A little bit about my education. I have a BS degree in accounting from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I graduated Phi Beta Kappa in 1972. Most of you weren't even around at that point in time. I have an MBA with honors from the Kellogg Business School, Northwestern University, which is in Evanston, Illinois, which is one of the top business schools uh, in the world. Supposedly, that's what they uh, tell me at this point in time. Um, what does a legislator do? Because I, to get in, I think we need to set the stage here. We are the policy making branch for the county. We set policies for the people of Westchester County. We are co equal branch with the county executive and his administration. We approve budgets and spending for the county. Our current budget is $2.2 billion. In November, we get the budget for the 23 uh, year, and that will probably be a little bit more than $2.2 billion. It takes 12 votes for the issuance of bonds, nine votes for other items, 12 votes override the county executive's uh, veto if he vetoes an item. Again, we have 17 legislators. We have five members who are African-American, one who's Hispanic. We have eight women, and we have nine men at the Board of Legislators at this point in time. We also levy county property taxes, approve the appointments of the county executive. We pass laws, acts, and resolutions. But the most important thing we do each and every day and as we were coming over this morning, I was talking to my uh, assistant, we serve constituents, constantly out serving the constituents in, a, in our district and the county. I represent District 5. That is most of the city of White Plains, all of the village of Scarsdale, and we have West Harrison, and there are several e uh, election districts there, 1, 2, and 11. I represent approximately 59,000 people, but we work all over the county. 
and that is based upon the 2020 census. We are currently in the process of redistricting the county board of legislators because our population for the, from 2010 to 2020 grew from 955,000 to approximately 1,000, 1,004,000 people. So we will have to redistrict the board so that each district will be of equal size representation. And we're literally in the process of doing that as we speak. Now that I've given you basically some overview, I really want to talk about working for equitable and inclusive communities. What do we do to make sure this happens? But I start at a different place. I take you back to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill because I want to let you know I just didn't start doing this when I arrived in Westchester County. I'm from the eastern part of North Carolina. As a freshman at the University of North Carolina, I started there in 1968 in the fall of August. In February of 1969, I helped close down Lenore Hall, which was the dining hall so that African-American women could get a pay raise. This was groundbreaking, not only in North Carolina, but throughout the country. This was years before we talked about equal pay for women. So I have been doing this all my life. I stood when they sent 304 troops at the University of North Carolina with guns to put down the, quote, uprising that we had. I did not realize then, as a freshman, the importance that that would have, not only in North Carolina, but throughout the country. And again, it was groundbreaking and really the forerunner of the whole issue of equal pay for equal work for women. Now let's move forward to Westchester County. In 1999, November, Westchester County established a Human Rights Commission, groundbreaking uh, department, extremely controversial. In fact, I was speaking to the director of the Human Rights Department just last Saturday, and he said, Ben, the controversy over this, because it included things relating to sexual orientation. One of the individuals that was responsible for help setting up the Human Rights Commission in the county of Westchester was the Honorable Andrea Stewart Cousin, who is currently the Senate Majority Leader for the state of New York. Again, a groundbreaking thing. And what does the Human Rights Commission do? They fight discrimination. They protect individual rights. Enforce human rights laws. Enforce fair housing laws. They have the power to issue subpoenas. Again, groundbreaking. Forward thinking. Many, many counties now have some type of human rights commission modeled after what we did at Westchester County back in 1999. It was way before I came on the county board of legislators. The other thing, as a welcoming community, Westchester believes that we must have affordable housing. In fact, in this current budget, we have put aside $50 million so that we can help developers put together affordable housing. We'll see a slide later on of me attending the ribbon cutting of an affordable housing facility in the city of White Plains. Because we believe that people of all income levels should live and work in their communities. It is very difficult to do it, but we're working through it. Now I want to go to the next slide where we will spend some time talking about the numerous laws that we have passed to make Westchester County a more opening and welcoming community. Under my leadership as chairman of the board from 2018 to, to the end of last year, we passed many laws, and one of the first things we did was we passed the Immigrant Protection Act. We passed that law so that we said to all immigrants in this county 
Don't be afraid if a crime has been committed against you. Go to the White Plains police. Go to the county police. Go to anyone that you can and let them know that a crime has been committed against you or, against, or that you know that a crime has been committed. Don't feel intimidated. Because of this law, being able to pass that, we have stopped many crimes. We have solved many crimes that we've had. And all. Now, this is not a sanctuary law. I want to make it very clear. This law does not prohibit law enforcement from working with the federal governments. And, all. and this law was um, made sure that our public safety committee, our corrections department, and our probation department for the county, and many of our police departments were in agreement that this is something that we should do. We passed earned sick leave legislation in 2018. Many people, in fact, 75% of the people in Westchester County, if you got sick, you had to go to work. We said, this is unfair. So we passed a law that individuals can earn up to 40 hours of sick leave a year to take it any way you need to. If you got a sick relative, you got a sick spouse, partner, someone else in your family is sick, friend, you can take time to do it. You earn up to 40 hours a year. This was in 18. We had something called a pandemic in 2020, okay? I mean, there were additional laws that allowed people to take time. But again, this was groundbreaking legislation. And in fact, the, the state overrode this because they finally looked at our law in Westchester County and passed a state law that overrode our law that we passed here. Salary history questions banned in hiring. Let's talk about that. Normally we know that women and people of color tend to make less than others. For example, suppose you had a job paying $75,000 and you were interviewing someone and they say, well, what are you making? 50. You say, okay, well, I don't have to pay you 75. I can pay you maybe 55. And if you are a woman or a person of color, you come in, say, at 55 versus 75, you never move up. You're always behind the eight ball, behind the curve. So you can no longer now in Westchester County, when you're interviewing a candidate for a position, say, what are you currently making? It's illegal. This year, we also passed another law down here called Salary Range Transparency Law that says, ah, now when you have a job opening, if you got five or more employees, you need to say what is the salary range for that job. So if I'm applying for that job, I know now what the range is. You can't ask the salary anymore, and you will know the range. Again, groundbreaking technology to make sure that we are welcoming, we're inclusive, and we're not being discriminatory. That is really, really important. We raised the age to 21 for people to buy tobacco products. I got this from a young man out of Scarsdale who came and said, you know, we need to raise the age because so many teenagers are smoking tobacco products. We had a lot of meetings throughout the county. I met with many people throughout the county and we passed this law which says that people under 21 cannot buy tobacco products. We banned conversion therapy van. You cannot now force someone to change sex. Basically what that means. We ban the ability for one to do that, especially relating to people under age. We passed a home improvement licensing law. We discovered that many contractors in Westchester County were hiring people primarily immigrant, primarily Hispanic immigrants, and they weren't paying them. So we said, oh no, this is unfair. So some of the individuals came to the board and said, this is a problem. We picked this up in Port Chester, by the way, a town not too far from here. 
So we put together this law, which says if we discover this, we're going to pull the contractor's license, and they can no longer do business in Westchester County. You get your license pulled, that's a real problem, okay? Because you're now working illegally in the county of Westchester. We also passed a co-op disclosure law. We have many co-ops in Westchester County, and we were getting information that, oh, there's a problem with co-ops. There's been discrimination in co-ops. We took a lot of testimony, said, oh, no, there's no discrimination here. So what we did, we put together a bill, a lot of, a very controversial. We had a provision which said after three years, we'll let it sunset. Within those three years, we received 500 plus complaints, okay? So we said, oh, there is a problem here in Westchester County with people trying to get co-ops. And we didn't, in the bill we passed originally, you did not have to give a reason for why you were turned down. This year we updated that law, which now says you have to give a reason if you turn someone down for, for the reason that they cannot buy a co-op in Westchester County. We also put in the law that you, there's certain financial parameters that a co-op board has to give to you. Now we've gotten some pushback from people in the building trades on this. Uh, we're looking into this because they're saying some places saying this is creating a very big hardship on them. We are open to discussion if we pass laws and we need to make amendments to it. So we're currently looking at what we need to do to see if we need to amend it. Again, a law to make sure that we are making sure that everyone who wants to live in this community have the resources, can live in this community, and it will take discrimination out of the picture. I've talked about the salary range, um, this transparency law. Reproductive Health Care Facilities Access Law. This is a law that the county board passed this year, which relates to a woman who wants to go into a health clinic for reproductive health care. We passed a law where you have to be certain feet, if you're protesting, you have to be certain feet from that individual. You have to provide access to the person to get into the clinic where they can get out of the clinic. We're trying to protect the employees of the, of the healthcare facility, the clients that are coming into the healthcare facility, and we're trying to protect the protesters that want to protest against this. I think this law does not violate anyone's First Amendment freedoms. We may get challenged on this in the court, but we are prepared to fight any challenge that we may get from this law. Um, uh, that we passed this year. We also passed a food allergy bill this year, among other bills. We, these, we passed a lot of bills, and these are just some of the highlights of the bills that we passed. Did you know that 20 to 30 percent of the population has a food allergy? So we passed this bill this year that says restaurants have to have a sign on the door that says, we've got someone, if you've got four or more employees, five and more, We've got someone trained in food allergies. You put the sign on the door, the sign has to also be in the store. And that person trained has to know what to do if there are various food, if, if an individual says they have a food allergen, et cetera. And as you know now, if you go to many restaurants in Westchester through Ruth and in Manhattan and maybe through other areas, you're usually asked by your waiter or the person serving you, do you have any food allergies that we need to know of? Or they may say, hey, we are not serving certain products here anymore because of people with food allergies. Like some restaurants have taken peanuts off the agenda because there'll be a lot of people who have a, 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 uh, allergic to, to peanuts, et cetera. So again, this is again to protect the health and well-being of individuals in the county. We've also passed another hate incident uh, law this year, added that to our um, Human Rights Commission, where they have additional 
responsibilities now to investigate hate acts in the county. As you know, hate acts against Asians, Latinos, it, and the chief can talk about. We know how that has been expanding throughout you know, Westchester, throughout New York City and all. So we wanted to pass this law to help those individuals if there's harassment, hate crimes being committed against them. So what, what these bills do is to protect the health, well-being, and safety of individuals throughout Westchester County. Westchester County has been always in the forefront of passing groundbreaking laws. We've been challenged on some of them, some challenges we've not been able to overcome, but we don't wait to see if we're gonna be challenged on laws and regulations. We move forward with things that we think are in the best interest to protect the people of Westchester County. Now, not only do we have laws and bills that we pass, and the county executive sign those, because a law does not be, a bill does not become law until the county executive has signed it, or he can send the bill back to the board without signing it and say, "I'm not signing it," but it will become law within 10 days. He has signed every bill that we have sent up, so that is important to know. Now, not only do we have laws, but we have various advisory boards that we've set up in the county to address issues of a diverse community and deal with diversity. The African American Advisory Board, the Hispanic Advisory Board. Uh, when I was chair of the board, we set up the board for people with disabilities so that people with disabilities could have a seat at the table so that we would know what their issues are so that the board can better deal with those uh, issues. We also have numerous heritage celebrations that the Board of Legislators celebrate. We started out in February with the African American uh, Heritage Celebration. Monday night, October 3rd, we will be having the Italian Heritage Celebration. In fact, this evening, I will be going to an Italian Heritage Celebration with the County Executive's Office where we'll celebrate in, um, Italian, well, this is Italian American Heritage Month. We just had Hispanic last month. So we have all these heritage celebrations that we have to recognize the ethnicity and diversity within Westchester County. The other thing that we do is we provide funding for 50C3 nonprofit organizations throughout the county. As we're putting together our 2023 budget, we'll be looking for the organizations that we will continue to fund and new organizations that we may be funding. I just had a, a, a Zoom meeting with uh, someone from Nonprofit Westchester on Tuesday, so they're talking about what their ask will be for the Board of Legislators for the upcoming 2023 year. So in other words, we have a lot of things in Westchester County that we're doing to be a welcoming and opening community. And now I got a, sl a slide here just to show you that not only are we talking about things, but we are there. You see the first slide over here is Earn Sick Leave Rally, which we had in the rotunda of the Board of Legislators. We had over 250 people, which oops, maybe it was almost too many people there. Um, the largest rally we ever had at the Board of Legislators because this was such an important issue for working people in Westchester County. We also had this year at our Renaissance Fountain in White Plains, we had the Harriet Tudman statute come. We were one of 25 cities in the country to get this statute and it was there for several months from I think April, about around April 1st to around uh, late June. Again, you got to understand your history to understand where you've come from, where you are, and where you're going. Just as information for those that don't know, Harriet Tudman helped many slaves from the South escape and get their freedom. The railroad came through New York, the Underground Railroad, 
And for those that have read their history, it went up through Chicago, it went up through Detroit. In fact, I just found out last week when I was in Buffalo, it was actually in Buffalo also. So throughout the South and all. And if you know your history, for the people that lived on the East Coast, like Georgia, um, North, South Carolina, North Carolina, they came the Underground Railroad north. If you lived in uh, Alabama, if you lived in Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, the Underground Railroad followed the train line through Chicago. In fact, we lived in Evanston. We meet all these people from Bayou Country, and we realize that that's because that's how they travel through the railroad. Also, I show a picture here of a rally that I attended with ladies about this was uh, protesting the Roe versus Wade uh, decision that took place earlier this summer. I was there at that rally uh, uh, with, with these ladies protesting that. I talked about Westchester is a welcoming community. We want affordable housing, but you can't only talk about it, you got to do it. It's hard to do, but we, I was at the opening and the ribbon cutting of the overture in White Plains, which is a new affordable housing project that also has market rent housing in it. Because now when you build housing, you try to build both uh, affordable units and also market rate. It was an outstanding opening there that we had um, in July. Finally, we say we want to have a community that's welcoming to everyone. We discovered that one of the ride-sharing companies, and some of you may have taken Lyft or Uber here, Lyft will not pick up people in wheelchairs. This is not fair. We've gone to court, well, a group has gone to court, one of my, my very good friends is the attorney for them, have gone to court to say, Lyft, you must pick up people in wheelchairs. This is the rally outside of the federal court here, the one on the left, right here at bottom, uh, where I attended, where we had people represent in, uh, represented of the disabilities communities in wheelchairs protest and lift, and then they went in to hear the judge and present their case to the judge. So not only do we act, we also out there with working and serving other constituents and all. I think I was to take about 15 minutes, and I think my next slide is simply how you can reach me. Uh, that's my information there. Um, and at the break and all, I can give you more information, my assistance information. But the important thing is we in Westchester welcome all. We're open. We want people here. We must have a diverse community because diversity is our strength. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and look forward to the Q&A period. Thank you.